friends, welcome back to my channel. I'm Sarah, this is where I talk about historic costuming and a bunch of other stuff through the lens of disability and parenting. Today is a very simple one. I'm gonna be answering 21 questions for the year 2021 and cause two as a rule has decided to do a check-in and this is what we're doing. Before I get started, question of the day, what else after you've heard all these questions would you like to know about me? And I will do my best to answer all of them in the comments. Hit the subscribe button, hit the bell, Check out my description box for links to all of my social spots. Why do I always say social spots? Really? Social spots, including Kofi, where you can make a one-time donation to help support the channel. All right, let's get this show on the road. Question number one, what is your favorite genre of costuming? I prefer recreating historical garments for the sheer geekiness of it all. I love knowing that I'm able to connect to the past through what I'm doing. Um, and it feels really like a kind of magic. I have dabbled in cosplay and that kind of thing, and I will again for my kids because they really enjoy that, but for myself I really enjoy the historical stuff. Question number two. What originally got you into costuming, cosplay, living history, etc.? This one goes way back, so I've always loved history. I was a little girl who would wear multiple dresses for um, dressing up just because I wanted to make sure I had petticoats under my skirt. Um, as a teen, I got to spend some time in a living history museum uh, through Girl Guides, which was fantastic and amazing, and I loved every minute of it. Um, as I grew up, though, I kind of felt like people who made costumes were also reenactors, and there wasn't any reenacting around me that isn't um, military-based, so I kind of felt like I couldn't make historic garments and then costume came along and they were there was just all these people making what they wanted to and i was like yes that let's do that and here i am the rest is history <laughs> <laughs> number three what are your favorite materials to work with seriously i'll work with anything as long as it doesn't make my job harder so if it's not unraveling or extra slippery or falling apart under my hands just don't make my life more complicated, please. Number four, who do you look up to and who taught you your craft? Um, I look up to and admire all the pretty pictures I get to see on Instagram. I love the app for that fact. Um, I aspire to make something that could be photographed and look so lovely, um, or at least just not have visible errors in it. My mother was one who taught me how to sew. Um, and she really it does inspire me every day because she was someone who did cake decorating and rug hooking and embroidery and sewing and, 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 and. And she died when I was 11, so sewing and crafting is really a way that I can re reconnect with her and um, feel close to her. Um, I do really wonder sometimes, though, what she would think of all of this, if she would be someone who would want to jump in and get in on it with me, or if she would think it was a waste of time and money. <laughs> Number five, are you team cut or team trace for pattern paper pieces? I should be team trace. I make enough boo-boos without adding any of the risks of team being team cut. But I'm also impatient and prone to wearing myself out, so sometimes I skip steps. It is what it is. Pins or pattern weights? 100% team pins. I've tried pattern weights. Um, but again, with the slipping around, I can't figure out how you get shears under your fabric to cut without everything moving and slipping all over the place. Um, they're beautiful, but no thank you. <laughs> what skill would you like to learn? This is six, number six. What skill would you like to learn? All of them. Um, rather like my mother, I tend to have my fingers in lots of little pies. I have gone through knitting and embroidery and sewing and sewing modern garments and sewing for my kids, hat making, um, excuse me. Um, right now I've just started weaving. I bought myself a rigid heddle loom and I'd like to try tablet weaving as well because there's so much interest in that on the internet and I've seen so many people do it and it looks really cool. So yeah, everything. I'd like to learn all of the things. <laughs> That's realistic, right? What f seven? What fabrics are in an online basket that you would love to buy? Silk taffeta. I would love to buy ten meters of silk taffeta. Um, in theory, I would love to create a giant robe à la française with big paniers and all that. But 
but it's not going to happen this year or probably next year financially. So it stays in the basket and I just look at it sometimes. Number eight. How many pieces are lurking in your UFO bin? Oh boy, here we go. Are you ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12, 13, 13 pieces. Number nine, biggest sewing or crafting pet peeve. For me, it's unclear instructions when I'm reading something. Over explain it to me, tell it to me five different ways and show me pictures from different angles. Please just don't leave me wondering what the hell I'm supposed to be doing. Number 10, what is your favorite tool to use? I'm gonna have to be really lame here and say my thimble. For me, because I spend so much time in bed, learning to hand sew and really upping my game on hand sewing has been really, really helpful. Uh, I can kind of blast through projects now, just by the look of my <laughs> UFO bin, I swear. Um, it's really a great way for me to be able to finish projects without having to worry about getting up to the machine if I can't. Has the pandemic changed how you sew and craft and what you sew and craft? Not really, but because so many other people have had this sudden burst towards making and creating since they've been stuck at home, um, I have really been able to kind of use that enthusiasm to up my own game and take started taking YouTube very ser more seriously. Um, I've taken the time to really enjoy what I'm making because there was a little more time because my kids were with their dad. Um, yeah, that's about it. What costume would you like to revisit? For me, it would be my medieval kirtle. I made it years ago from a tutorial from a tutorial by Morgan Donner, to be honest. Um, and the fit in the shoulders and the bust is really, really terrible. Uh, if, but it fits really nicely through kind of the waist and hips. So, and it's really pretty fabric. So I would really love to be able to go back yeah. and make it over. Nope, nope, nope. Most satisfying technique. That's a what, 11? Are we on 11? Flat filling seams. It's so quick once you get in the groove and then it just looks so professional and cool and like you know what you're doing. 12, do you pick a project and then procure materials or collect materials and let them speak to you? Um, in theory, in theory, I buy things knowing what I'm going to use them for, but usually it's pretty vague. So like my daughter wants an 1860s dress to match mine, um, but I don't have a, but I didn't have a pattern picked out when I bought the material or whatever. So, and often I just buy things because they go together because my daughter and my friend's daughter who live in the house like to match or something like that. Um, so I generally have a very loose idea and I often change that idea, but I don't just buy fabric because it's pretty, because otherwise, how do you know how much to buy? Number 13, are we on 13? I don't know how many we're on now. Scissors or rotary blade? Scissors, 100% scissors. I have a rotary blade and I do use it, especially for things like bias strips, but I find it very, very slippery and it tends to get away from me and I have cut myself on it a few times, which, you know, is painful. Ow. Do you have any sewing assistants, AKA pets? Yes, I do. I have Casey, who I call the Black Void when I post about him online because he's a very, very flat back black dog and therefore very hard to photograph. Um, I do have a clip I filmed earlier that doesn't have any sound to it of me that I will put in here because I'm holding him. He's really a bad dog. <laughs> he is. He's badly trained. Um, he's very, very smart, knows how to get into literally everything and is quite convinced that anything that smells like wool is a thing he should eat. So where are we now? Four. 15. Do you have any bad sewing habits? I have tons. Most of them come in because I'm in both impatient and um, lack time, but I'm sure some of them are just because I don't even know I'm doing them. Number 16? 15? I've lost track entirely. Do you sew over your pins or take them out as you go? I sew over them. 
And I would like to say that I was taught to sew over them back in home ec in 1993 by Mrs. Shaysom. So there, people who tell me I shouldn't. <laughs> My teacher told me I could. I sound like a six-year-old. Number, we'll pretend 17, tea, coffee, or chocolate. If I only get to keep one, I pick tea because I can't live without tea. My father comes from England and my British grandmother would literally rise from her grave to beat me if I said anything else. Um, I, I do like chocolate though, and I would totally go for chocolate if it was on offer. Coffee is really just for guests. And I need Diet Coke too. So chap number 18-ish. Oh no, this is the last one. I don't know. Apparently we're on 21 somehow. I don't know how that, quite how that happened. What do you like to watch or listen to while sewing? 21. <laughs> we made it. I mostly watch YouTube. I watch a lot of YouTube. Um, if you pay attention around the edges of my videos, you'll very often see other YouTubers' faces on my phone or on my laptop. Um, right now, I'm kind of listening to a lot of true crime. Um, Stephanie Harlow is my favorite because she goes into so much detail that her videos are so long, you don't have to change them very often, which I love. Um, I watch a lot of it, though. I watch a lot of different things. Um, other than YouTube, I watch Drag Race and I watch John Oliver and usually I stick to kind of reality-ish kinds of things because I, since my divorce, I just haven't had the emotional bandwidth to deal with other people's problems in TV shows for some reason. Um, I know that sounds completely contradictory to the true crime thing, but I don't know what to tell you. I just have not had a show that I have been able to, well, I've had a couple, but... It's very exhausting liking people who are fictional. Anyway, apparently that's 21 questions. So I'm gonna end this video here. Thank you very much for listening. Again, I'd love to know what else you'd like to know. Hit the subscribe button, send me a one-time donation through Ko-fi, and I'll see you in the next one.